A practical prayer is a prayer that works. These discussions between Reverend Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence dive into the details of how it works and how to work it. Reverend Bill is a new thought minister and the author of Practical Prayer for Real Results. Your new life begins with a new thought. Carol Lawrence is on a spiritual quest, finding the new thought teaching after decades on the pulpit in three different traditional denominations. I've got some questions. Together, they're exploring the philosophy and activities that come together from many of the world's religions to create the practical spirituality that is new thought. Welcome to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol Lawrence, here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni, and we are going to discuss something wonderful, as usual. You teased a little bit with meditation, but absolutely zero details. <laughs> because there are too many. It's <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so naturally... I have read a ton of stuff about it. And it seems like almost every time I read something, it's different. Depends on who writes it. I was reading some affirmative prayers. That's what they were before you rewrote the book. Spiritual mind treatments. Spiritual mind treatments. Before the practical prayer book, yeah. And then I looked at Ernest Holmes' meditations, which are very different than meditations from the gurus and the Buddhists that I hang out with sometimes online. So I thought, there is no one way. So can we just kind of talk about it? Because I'm feeling when people ask me questions, it feels very uncomfortable to push a process on someone and it's not who they are or it doesn't resonate with them, you know, because then you're working hard at it. That's my question. Was that a question? Oh, yeah. You set up the field for what we want to be discussing, which is how to meditate. And the answer is meditate however it works. The idea in this whole thing is that when we pray, we are speaking with that infinite creative power that creates everything. And when we meditate, we're listening. Now, with any good conversation, we want to do both. We want to spend a little time listening and then a little time talking and then a little more time listening, and that way we get a dialogue going. And the specific technique that we're using for meditation doesn't matter nearly as much as that we actually do something. There are some people who are so bored to sit in silence on a purple pillow, and they will find every reason in the world to not do that. In which case, don't do that, because that doesn't work. There are people who love being active and sitting still is gruesome. (laughs) (laughs) So do a moving meditation. The whole practice of yoga was created to get the body moving to the point where it could sit still for a meditation. The last pose in a yoga practice is Shavasana and that's the meditation. That's the whole point of it is to become aware of our breathing and our movement and to be able to use the body so that it doesn't have to move anymore and do a meditation. It is completely possible to go for a walk. Best to do it in nature, although it can work anytime. And just be mindful. Pay attention to what's going on around. Let the chatter in our head shut up. It's like, okay, all I'm doing is walking down the path, looking at the trees and appreciating the beauty. And when I start thinking about what I'm going to make for dinner or what the bank balance is or what did she mean by saying that and the rest of the chatter in our mind comes along, is to turn it off. No, what I'm doing now is being fully present for this walk. I'm taking a step, I'm taking a breath, I'm taking a step, I'm taking another breath. Some people do it when they're jogging or running. They get into a euphoric zone where that feeds their soul and they can let go of everything else. I spent a bunch of time as a rock climber, which is wonderful, good fun, great workout. But it was very spiritual for me because I found as I was reaching over and overhang to grab onto the little piece of rock so that I could pull myself up and not fall 30 feet. Well, on a rope, I wasn't going to fall the whole 30 feet, but your mind doesn't think about the rope. Your mind just thinks about the terror of falling. There was nothing else on my mind other than being fully present for that activity. So whatever we're going to do to meditate, it'll work as long as we do it. 
Mm -hmm. So for me, I felt like it was a journey to find out what kind of works for me Mm -hmm. because I started reading. And, you know, of course, when you think of meditation, there's this idea that you have to be sitting for an hour and then there's guided meditation that will have you sitting there for an hour. So I got used to that until I actually tranced a couple of times. Mm. And I thought that was it, right? <laughs> I thought, okay, I got it now. And I did that like maybe three, four days in a row. And I said, I don't think this is it because I am <laughs> <laughs> like, I know what I'm trying to achieve. I'm achieving something, but it's not what I think it's supposed to be. I was actually trancing. And I thought, maybe I'll do that another time when I'm after something different. Mm. So it, it's no particular amount of time. I did a whole rewind on it and said, let's start all over again. you know. And if you can just be present, fully present for just a few minutes, go with that. Yeah. What we're looking at doing in meditation is getting into the space between our thoughts. And a lot of teachers call it the gap. What we want to do is whatever technique is going to get us to the non-thinking awareness. That's what we want to do. There are people who do this with chanting. That's what a kirtan is. And there are lots of ways that we can do kirtan and do the chanting. We can do it by listening to meditative music that's going to calm us down. There's brainwave entrancement or entrainment where there are specific frequencies that work on different brainwaves and stimulate us that way. Whatever works for you, whatever works to get the mind quiet enough that we can get into the gap, that's where the meditation leads us. And you talked about reading. Another type of meditation is a passage meditation where you take a quote or a mantra or a scripture and you just repeat it. I've done that with the 23rd Psalm. Prayer of St. Francis is awesome. Man, that's a great way to live. And to be able to take that into the silence and just repeat that and be aware in rich detail of the meaning of each word, it becomes a very spiritual process because we're connecting with something that's bigger than ourselves. Yeah, it's amazing. And I'm really glad that you've taken it in this direction because when you talked about the purple pillow, you know, like when I first started, I was just so intense about trying to get every single thing right. And I'm out <laughs> trying to buy this purple pillow. <laughs> find the right <laughs> purple pillow. And, you know, they, somebody in the audience might be laughing, but when you're trying so desperately to get everything right, you know, like, where's this purple pillow? And I saw one in Marshalls, I think. Mm -hmm. And I thought, the holy pillows in Marshalls? Come on. <laughs> like, I got a grip on myself. And nothing wrong with Marshalls, but I just nope. thought it's not in the pillow. It's not in the pillow. And I have a purple pillow that I sometimes sit on. And it's actually purple. And it actually came from Marshall's. And I also have, I think it's a Zafu, which is a meditation pillow, a thicker thing to prop me up a little bit. And I've noticed that in years of doing yoga, I'm actually more able to sit cross-legged for a period of time. That does not make me any more spiritual. What that makes me is a little bit more flexible and able to sit cross-legged for a longer period of time. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah, but when she told me that earlier, because I know I can't do the cross-legged thing, right? And I thought, you're not gonna, you're, you're just not going to be able to do this because you can't sit right. Right. Oh, yeah, that's the problem. Yeah, because God's not going to listen to you <laughs> or talk to you if you're not in the correct posture. Because really? that's what I thought. You know, I'm <laughs> it's trying, not, it's I'm trying not to get true. it all right. <laughs> you know? And right is however it works for you. One of my favorite sayings is practice makes practiced. You just get to do it. I've been doing meditations and practical prayers on Insight Timer, which is the iPhone and Android app. And there are, at this point, tens or hundreds of thousands of meditations and thousands of teachers and millions of subscribers and listeners. I do a, a silent meditation every morning, 15 minutes, just to do it. I play it in silence because the music distracts me and I spend more time figuring out which track I want to listen to than I would actually doing the meditation. So it plays three bells and then 15 minutes of silence and plays three bells again. And then it'll tell me that I meditated with 7.5 million people. And here are the ones who are close by. Just do it. You know, insight timer 
or something else. Do a silent track, do a guided meditation, do just the music, do the binaural beats, listen to somebody doing a Dharma talk where they're talking and giving some instruction. And the thing about doing 10 different varieties of meditation is you'll find eight that you don't like that don't work for you and two that you do like. Ah, and then do those some more and see which ones you like and then dive into the nuance a little bit and do the practice. Practice makes practice. And it's the discipline of doing it on a regular basis that makes it happen. I don't get into the same meditative space every time I do a meditation. I sometimes spend that entire 15 minute period just thinking about my to-do list. And it is completely counterproductive because my to-do list is still going to be there. I'm not actually going to get up and check anything off of the list while I'm meditating. But the chatter in my monkey mind is taking over and I just breathe and it's like, okay, you guys can be quiet anytime now. <laughs> we can shut up anytime. Now. I'm meditating over here. And there are other times where I just like get right into the zone and it is uplifting and refreshing and the time goes by in an instant. Yeah, of course, coming from a traditional church background, every single thing that you do in church, there's a right and a wrong. Like there's rules upon rules upon rules. And so I came to New Thought or traveled that, you know, distance, trying to figure out, well, how do I live in a world where there's no right, wrong, right, wrong, right? And mm -hmm. so I'm in this thing trying to meditate. And so I'm reading, 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 trying to find right, wrong. And it's so much. I thought, I don't think there's any right or wrong here. Okay. So what am I after? And how can I get to what I need to get to by being me and okay with that? Mm -hmm. And that's the road I took. Yeah. And there's not a right and wrong, like there's the specific path that you need to follow in new thought. So there's no right. There is a wrong. Let's take a break and we'll come back and talk about what's wrong. That'll be interesting. Get inspiration in an instant. God calls are the gentle and uplifting moment of truth to help you remember that the bright light of God's love is shining right now as you. It's your God call with Reverend Bill. Start your two-week free trial today and you'll get a phone call four times a week from Reverend Bill with an uplifting half-minute message filled with insight, wisdom, story, and fun. Let your light shine. You can answer the call to listen to it live or let it go to voicemail so you can hear it later. After the free trial, your subscription is just $5.95 a month. The details are at godcall.org. God calls are disruptive, intentionally. Whenever you write something, put on a gold star. They take you away from your routine to remind you about the truth of who you really are. They come at random times between 8.15 a.m. and 6 p.m., so you won't be expecting them. And somehow, the message is exactly what you need to hear at the time. Magic is loose in the world. It's a moment of motivation in the middle of your day. Find out more and start your two-week free trial now. Welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol Lawrence here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. Can't wait to get to this part. Yeah, as I told you, there's a way to do it wrong. Okay. In New Thought, there's a way to do it wrong. So we've distilled down what the New Thought belief is. And there's a lot of different nuances and ways to express it. But the way we say it at New Thought Philadelphia is that we believe that there's one power, love, intelligence, or force that creates everything including each of us, and that we each use that same power, love, intelligence, or force to create our lives according to our beliefs. And the shorthand version of that is your new life begins with a new thought. And that's the one that, that like went on my license plate frame. Your new life begins with a new thought. But it's the double sentence that we believe there's one. So the only way to do it wrong is if you are making an assumption that there's more than one. That's the essence of the unity teaching. That's the essence is that there's oneness. When I'm thinking that there's God out there and me over here, then that's incorrect. And it's going to lead me to a place where it doesn't work. If I believe that God is fighting with Satan for control over existence, then I have made a mistake because there is no force of evil. 
There are places where the good is not showing up in a way that I enjoy it, but it's all God. Everything is God expressed in its own way. So the only way to do it wrong is to skip over that assumption and then start going down the road of you need something else in order to be spiritual. There's something standing between you and your divine essence, any of the rest of that. Got you. Something you just said made me think about other things that I did trying to get to the right. I looked up what the room should be like, you know, (laughs) what you need to have in the room and the candles and what the candles should be like. I had such a list. It was more work getting to you. (laughs) You couldn't imagine just get all the work I did try to get to it. And I mean, I'm not even talking about the money. That's no big deal because you'll pay anything if you think you're getting to the truth. But what made me think about, Carol, maybe you're on the wrong track because I forgot to light the candles one morning. And I thought, when I finished, I thought, you didn't light the candles. You didn't get there, did you? But I could <laughs> but I could have swore that it was successful if I could use that term. So maybe the candles are irrelevant in terms of actual needing and whatever. So I finally got it down and I use the candles because they're nice and because I like them, but not because I'm not gonna get there without them. Right. The candles are helpful if they're helpful. Sitting on a purple pillow is helpful if it's helpful. There are some people you take, you say, I would like you to go out into the woods and take a walk in nature. And they go, oh my God, you mean where it's hot and humid? Can I bring some air conditioning and some concrete and glass with me? Can I look at nature through a window? <laughs> like, if you're that paranoid about being out in nature, then don't do it because it's not going to be a spiritual experience. It's going to be an unpleasant experience. Yeah, so you're putting my business out there, right? Because there's no way I could do it walking in nature because I'm too scared of bugs, right? So I'd be thinking (laughs) some bug is going to get me if my eyes are closed. But yeah, I get it. I get it. Okay, you don't have to close your eyes. I mean, opening your eyes when you're in nature, just being aware of what's going on. There are people who love to sit at the top of a cliff in the sun and meditate and bask in God's glory. And there are other people who would be so terrified of the cliff that there's no way that their mind would shut up and be going, get away, get away. The rope won't hold. The cliff is going to collapse. The edge is going to, yeah, all of that. (laughs) Do what works. Practice makes practice. And, you know, Livesey Rock in Wissahickon in Philadelphia is like 35 foot rock. I love to sit on the top of Livesey Rock and meditate. And I've climbed the rock a bunch of times, which I do while wearing, you know, ropes and harness. And when I sit up on the top, it feels different sitting there with a harness clipped into one of the the anchors versus just sitting up there. And when I'm just sitting up there, I'm a little farther back from the edge, but it's about finding our comfort zone and doing what works, do what works. Now, I think in an earlier episode, I talked about the metaphor of the Arthur Murray dance lessons. And if not, I will refresh you. So as we're learning to dance, The Arthur Murray technique is where you take numbered footprints and you put them on the floor and you step from one to two to three to four to five to six to seven to eight. And your partner has the other color and they step from one to two to three to four. And that way, you know, you're dancing and it's wonderful. And you can count, you can learn to waltz or to foxtrot or to cha-cha or square dance or whatever it's going to be doing that. And to my way of thinking, that's religion. These are the steps that you go through in order to have a spiritual practice or to be part of our religion. And they're very helpful and people can learn to dance that way. There are other people who just turn on the music and find the groove and dance. And sometimes they look fabulous and sometimes they look silly. And it doesn't matter how they look because they're connecting with it and they're dancing. And the whole downfall of the you got to follow the steps is if somebody says, could you please turn down the music? I'm trying to count. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, you've missed the point. The point is not to follow the steps. It's to get into that groove. Mm. Yeah. And I guess you could short circuit it by just not buying so many books and trying to read and make it this way or that way. You know, you just find your own space or your own groove. That's perfect to say it that way. Don't put the word just on there. 
if what's going to help is reading the books and trying the different techniques and finding a guru and you know, traveling to India because maybe they've got it going on, then eventually you either get to move to India because you, that resonates with you or you get to come home and say, ah, I learned something fascinating in India. And part of it was about which water to drink, you know, <laughs> whatever. We are always able to learn and take that insight and that information and add it into our practice. And we're also free to say, yeah, that doesn't work for me. I'm going to do something different instead. And that's what it comes down to, because I'm smiling with memory when you talked about India, because I'm reading and I'm looking at every video that I can put my hands on. And if somebody says something about somebody, I got that one and I'm looking at all of this and it's wonderful. But if it doesn't resonate with who I am, you know, it's like I'm mimicking something else and I wanted something different than that because I'd have to conjure up a feeling so that I could feel like what I see or what I imagine that I'm seeing. And it took a while to get out of that because I'm thinking they got it right and I don't. Mm -hmm. So I thought, okay, wait a minute. And you know, it's something you did in a class. You'll probably remember way back. We we're doing meditation and you were using different kinds of music. And I've already found the music that works for me. So it doesn't matter what in the world somebody does. This one is cool and I'm sticking with it. Mm -hmm. But I was, I was curious in that class. And I think you may have played two or three different kinds. And one almost fell off the chair. I'm thinking, I can't think like this. <laughs> <laughs> like, what is this? And I was trying because we were on Zoom, right? So I'm trying to make sure my face didn't show it because I was new to you then, right? I didn't want you to see like a crazy look on my face. And I'm thinking, oh God, I hope it's not showing on my face, but this music is killing me. <laughs> now, <laughs> and I was so curious to hear the responses from the other people in that class. And nobody said anything negative. Everybody was fine with it. So I'm sitting there thinking, well, I'm the only weirdo here, so I'm not saying anything. It's just, I'm sticking with what works for me. Mm -hmm. And that's what you do, I guess. And you actually mentioned one of those spiritual destinations a little earlier in the episode. And we can use it for a lot of guidance. And that, of course, is Marshalls. So there are times when we go to Marshalls, and more so before the pandemic when it was fashionable to try stuff on, I'm getting back to it now. But you go into Marshalls or Macy's or any store, any clothing store, and you look at all the things that are there and you say, well, that color is not going to look good on me. And this is a hideous style. And I saw somebody else wearing something like this once. and I would never do that. And you look at this. This might be nice. This could be interesting. Let me try this on and see how it feels, see how it looks, see how it fits. And you go into the dressing room and you take 15 pieces with you. Or if it's Marshall's, you can take seven because <laughs> they have <laughs> a limit. <laughs> and you try them on. And some of them fit. And some of them don't. And you don't say, oh, this one that didn't look good on me or that didn't fit, there's something wrong with it. No, it just doesn't fit. And that's what we're doing with our spiritual practice. We're not trying to judge the practice. This might look fabulous on somebody else. And this might look awful on everyone. And thank God there's some slob out there willing to wear it because it doesn't have to be me. You know, and just let your judgment go wild. But understand, this works for me. This doesn't work for me. And I'm going to take that as insight and guidance so that I can do what works for me. Yes, yes. And I think it's a good thing to start out with just that attitude, you know. But I was by myself, you know, I'm searching on my own. I didn't have you to tell me, don't worry about all of that. Like, I probably could have saved myself six months. Would you be younger or would you have just been doing different things after that six months? Oh, goodness, I'd be younger. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, then just go into the dressing room and put on six months younger and we'll move along. Yeah, you can that do sounds that. good. All right. It's also possible to ask the infinite to guide us towards the practices that are going to be most uplifting and conducive for us. So let's take a break and do a prayer. And the prayer will be the guidance to the sort of meditative and spiritual practices, which are really going to resonate with us. Great. Thank you. Learn to put practical prayer to work in your life. The steps are simple to learn and let you begin to get real results to create the life of your dreams immediately. Reverend Bill Marcioni's widely acclaimed book, Practical Prayer for Real Results, 
gives you a clear summary of the new thought principles behind practical prayer and the series of easy to understand steps found in the most effective prayers from religions and spiritual practices all over the world and throughout history. Practical prayer is not a replacement for your religion or practice. It's a technique to make the work you do in consciousness even more effective. The book includes 40 prayers on various topics that you can adapt as needed and use as your own. Practical Prayer for Real Results is available in paperback, Kindle, and audiobook on Amazon or at b-the-light.com. That's b-the-light.com. Welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol Lawrence, and here with Reverend Bill Marcioni. You're going to do a prayer on guidance for meditation. Yeah. Which is great. Because God knows what kind of meditation is going to work for me. And I might as well take advantage of that. Because I can ask God, I can invite God, that divine intelligence, to suggest one to me. Because if there are 10,000 different ways to meditate, maybe I only want to try five or six of them. And magically somehow come up with the one that's really going to resonate with me. I don't need to listen to every prayer on Insight Timer in order to know which one is going to work for me. I don't need to, to try every different sort of class or teacher in order to connect with it. You know what I was thinking? Something came to mind as you were saying that it had to be, I'm thinking about in the beginning when I was doing like all this searching and trying to get it right, I must have had been operating on the assumption that God is out there and I'm trying to figure out the pathway to get to him. Mm -hmm. And I never thought about that before, but yeah, that's exactly what I was doing. Like, how do I make this connection? I know the connection is possible, but I need to figure out how to make that. And the reason it brought it to mind, because you said you can ask the infinite, never occurred to me to ask, (laughs) right? Because I got to get to you to be able to ask. And now it's like wherever I am, I know God is here. So listen, we'll just do this right here. Yeah. You know, but save myself. So whoever's listening, you're, like, you're going to be able to save yourself months of looking and energetic searching. And therein lies the benefit of this teaching of oneness is that we are not on our own. We don't have to figure it out. There's no price of admission and there's no way that we're going to have the goods withheld from us or be punished for not thinking through things correctly or counting our steps accurately. The good is always at hand. So let us pray that way. This prayer is for divine guidance on exactly the spiritual practices which will bring insight and guidance and uplift to each one who's listening. And to know that it's going to be different for everybody. Humanity comes in seven, eight billion flavors, and there's not one that works for everyone. There is not one particular technique that's going to be right for everyone who's listening. So let's open to the guidance for what's right for me for now and for next. So as you're comfortable, go ahead and close your eyes. And it's not because there's something magical that happens with our eyes closed. It's because we get to turn away from all of the distractions and the details in the world around us. So we can open ourselves up to the awareness of that divine presence within. There is one infinite creative power that creates everything the center and circumference of all that exists everywhere. It is that infinite love, that limitless energy, that boundless supply, that divine intelligence that has been creating everything since the beginning of time. Everything that exists, every person, every place, every activity, every moment, every idea, every practice is that one taking its own specific and particular form. That includes me. That includes each person who is listening to this prayer. Each of us is a divine and perfect expression of that one. A dazzle point, a facet on the surface of a diamond that's reflecting and refracting the light. There is one diamond, but the light shines in so many, many different ways. Bringing detail and richness and color into the world, that rainbow that comes when the diamond gets into the sunlight. That's what's happening. We are each shining in our own specific way. Different yet all the same. 
And so that one infinite creative power that creates everything, that one divine mind that knows all, is even now guiding each of us to that perfect spiritual practice that will bring us a deeper awareness of our connection with spirit, a sense of peace and peace of mind and comfort and guidance and wisdom, and allow us to let go of attachment to the specifics in the world around us and be aware of that divine power within to allow us to settle into the gap. It happens in all sorts of different ways. It's different for each of us, and it's all good. So that wisdom and that guidance, that inspiration of the technique to try, of the path to choose or to experiment with, the track to listen to on the meditation app, it's all being revealed to us. And we are each being informed by that next perfect step, what's ours to do next. And we each are inspired to take it and allow the infinite to continue to move us through the process. It is possible that the first thing that we try is not going to be the last one that we're going to settle with. It is possible that there's a library or a variety or a cornucopia of different techniques that's right for each of us. And so I accept that good in whatever way it's showing up for each of us and for all of us. And I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the process. I'm grateful for the guidance. I'm grateful for the deepening spiritual practice of each one here, knowing that practice makes practice, and that makes us each more and more aware of the divinity that's the truth of who and what we are. So grateful for this good. I'm so grateful for the guidance. I'm so grateful for the willingness of each one listening. I'm so grateful for the awareness of this creative process, my ability to speak this word of intention, of invitation, and release it into that creative law, and to know without any question whatsoever that that law is saying, yes, this good is underway now. And so this feeling of thanks, I speak this word, I let it be, and I know it's so. And so it is. So it is. Practical Prayer Podcast with Reverend Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence is a production of BeTheLight.com. Be-the-light.com. Where you can find more information about practical prayer for real results. Our theme is by Music of Wisdom. You can learn about the spiritual community of New Thought Philadelphia with daily guided meditations, weekly celebrations of spirit, and Reverend Bill's classes in practical spirituality at NewThoughtPhilly.org.